it's really about power. It's about control. And um, you may start out in the marketplace where they want to have the biggest market share of an agrochemical or a seed business, but it's gotten to the point where there's such concentration where the top 10 companies, agrochemical companies like Monsanto, Syngenta, Bayer, DuPont, own you know, th two thirds of the commercial seed that's used in agriculture. So we have to understand that whoever, owns, whoever controls the future of seeds controls the future of food. And they're controlling what we eat, how we eat, how it's grown, and we have to decide as a society, who, not only who's in charge, but what that means. We really need to start thinking about what does that mean when farmers can no longer save seed and people in the grocery store, it may look like there's a lot of things to choose from, but it's all being produced by one or two companies. And when they decide to stop selling something, you're not going to be able to get it anymore. And that's already happening in the fields. Farmers are unable to get conventional cotton seed. This, these companies are saying, all that's left is GMO seed, buy it, and you have to sign a contract. You have to only buy our seed, only buy our chemicals. You can never reuse that seed. You can't save that seed. So farmers now are just renting their seed, renting the chemicals. They're taking all the risk, and these companies are making the money. In what world is that okay? Our world has dramatically changed. And I don't know that people's thinking has caught up with the reality here. We think of agriculture as abundant, maybe even beautiful, and you know, the orchards in the springtime, and the farmer in the fields, you know, and the reality is, is that it's a green desert of these genetically modified commodities just doused with enormous kinds of chemicals, herbicides and pesticides, and uh, insecticides that are polluting the soil in the river. You know, it's a giant industrial chemical industry, not the beautiful food and farming. Now in California, it's a little different. Oregon, it's a little different because we still have fruits and vegetables and some smaller farmers. And the good news is it's beginning to turn around and small farms are they're becoming more and more of them. But to understand the changes that happen, you have to kind of go back to when I was a, in the federal government, I was a lawyer for the United States Department of Agriculture in the Carter administration. Carter gave a speech about living within our limits. It's called the malaise speech. He didn't um, use that word, but he talked about oil. He talked about the kinds of problems we're facing. The real first, as Martin Luther King says, the fierce urgency of now. He had the courage to tell the American people the truth about the trends that were going on. And what did we do? We fired him, right? And we hired a guy, the great communicator, who said it's a new day in America and let's take government out of our lives. Let's not have public interest research. Uh, we passed the Bayh-Dole Act, which told universities that they could patent products if, um, from their research if using public money. Everything was privatized, commodified, and Reagan and his ilk, who are still in government, um, just basically commercialized everything and privatized everything. And we bought into that and we became great consumers. Our farmers are not producers, they're consumers. And we went to the mall and we stopped caring about the basic public infrastructure of agriculture, the research, the seeds, the farmers, what's happening to the, to the land, um, the great public institutions that really made this country what it is. And so that's been being completely exploited, mined from the soil on up, right? And, and we forgot. We just plain forgot what's important. 